Hello everyone. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can create a responsive drop-down navigation menu like the one you see on screen using just HTML, CSS and vanilla JavaScript. So what you see on screen is the wide version of the menu, but if you were to access this page on a smaller screen, say on a mobile, then you would see this view where there's a burger icon on the right, which you can click to access the menu items. And if you click it again, then it collapses back. So this is what we'll build in this tutorial. Let's get started by taking a look at the underlying HTML. Okay, so for this project, it makes semantic sense to place everything relating to the nav bar in HTML inside of a nav element. So what you have in the mobile view is on the left hand side, the logo and on the right hand side, the hamburger menu. So these are the two elements that I've included here. So the first element is an I element, which is recommended by Font Awesome for using their icons. So if you set the class to FAS FA terminal, then you will end up with an icon like I have here on the left hand side. I also used a Font Awesome icon for the burger icon on the right hand side. So that's embedded inside of a button. Now, if you want to use Font Awesome icons, like I'm doing here. Don't forget that you have to import it into your project in order to be able to use the icons. So I'm placing a CDN link here at the top of my document to the Font Awesome 5 library. So that's available via the CDN JS CDN server. So if you search for that, you want to make sure it's Font Awesome 5. You can use Font Awesome 6 if you want, but these classes here pertain to Font Awesome 5. Now, after creating the small screen view in its own div, you want to create the main menu items. So this is just an unordered list with list items and inside each list item, there's a link. It's not currently linking to anything. So you want to place the links as the href values here, of course, and you want to create as many list items as you want items on the menu. So here I have four home about projects and contact. Now, finally, for the HTML are the social media icons. So it's the same as the main menu items, an unordered list with list items. And in this case, the icons are coming from Font Awesome as well. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to the CSS. So at present, there is no CSS being applied. If we take a look at the page, you see we've just got the elements on the page there looking nothing like a navbar menu. So what I'm going to do first of all is to add some general styling. So first of all, I want the body to have no margin. In some cases, the navbar can stick out a little bit from the edge of the screen if you don't set the margin to zero. I'm setting the font family to sans serif, a background color for the nav, then for the unordered lists in the nav, so social media icons and the main menu items, I'm setting the list style type to none. That means there's going to be no bullet points. And the same issue with unordered list, there can be a bit of an unwanted margin in some cases. So it's good practice to set that to zero. And then finally, for the links inside the nav bar, I've made the font a little bit larger than usual. White smoke stands out against the purple background and the text decoration is set to none, meaning there won't be any underlining of the anchor elements containing the menu items and the social media icons. Okay, so let's take a look at the effect of the styling so far. So it's still nothing like a nav bar, better with the coloring, but we've still got a little bit more CSS to write, of course. Now the strategy for the next bit of styling is to style the nav bar for the small screen view only. And then later with media queries, use that to set a different view when the screen is larger. So I'll paste the next bit of styling in here and you'll see this approach in action. So for the menu items, these are the main menu items. The display is set to none because initially before clicking on the burger, the menu items shouldn't be visible to the user. So what we're doing next is styling the links inside menu items. Bear in mind that these still aren't visible. So the styling will apply when it drops down, when the user clicks on the burger. So we're setting the display to block here. So each menu item 
is on its own line, making the font size a little bit bigger than usual and some padding to the top of each of the menu items and also a bit of margin from the left so it's not too tight. Also very important, the social media icons do not appear in the mobile view, so the display for those is set to none. Now for the small screen elements, which recall are nested in their own div inside the nav container, I'm setting the children there, so we're talking about the logo and the burger icon on the right. So I'm using Flexbox to position them horizontally, flex direction row, and then the space between value what that's doing is pushing both of those elements to either side of the nav bar. And then after that, I'm using line items to center them vertically. And finally, the height, that's going to be the height of the actual nav bar. Now, the final two elements that I'm styling here are the burger and the logo. So this is really stylistic choice. Bear in mind that for font awesome icons, in order to make them larger, you make the font size bigger and that's going to change the size of the icons for you. So these are settings that you might want to play around with. Now let's take a look at that on screen. So this is looking really good for the small screen view. So we've got the logo and the burger, but when I click on the burger, nothing is happening. So for this, I'm going to use a little trick using CSS and a bit of JavaScript. So I'm going to add a class styling here going to say when the class show menu items appears on one of the elements so this is going to be applied to the menu items then the display is block it's set to none initially and I've also set a height so you might need to play around with that depending upon the number of menu items that you have and then down in JavaScript what we're going to be doing is toggling this show menu items for the menu items when the user clicks on the burger icon. So I've already selected the burger icon and also the menu items. So what I'm going to do first is to add an event listener to the toggle button, which is the burger listening out for a click. And when that occurs, what I want to happen is for the show menu items class, which we just added to the CSS to be toggled on the main menu items element. So what I want to say here is menu items, access its class list, and I want to use the toggle method. And I want to be toggling show menu items. So what this is going to do is to add the show menu items class to the menu items class list when it is not there. So initially by default, it's not there. So the first time it's clicked, it's going to be added. And then when it is there, and it's clicked again, it's going to be removed. So this is programming the opening and the closing of the menu via the burger. So if I click it now, you see that it drops down because it's now applying that class with the display of block and the height. And if I click it again, it's removed and you can no longer see the menu items. Okay, now the last bit of coding that you need to do is add some more CSS to account for the view when the screen is wider. So at the moment, we just have this one view with the hamburger on the right and the logo on the left. We want social media icons here on the right, the main menu items in the middle, and still having the logo there when the screen is wide like this. So we can do that by adding a media query to our CSS and inside that changing the styling of some of the elements. So what this media query is saying is if the user accesses the screen with a screen width of 700 pixels or greater, then apply this alternative styling to the page. So the first thing I'm doing here is setting the display of the burger to none because that only belongs in the small screen view. Now what I'm setting to the entire container is to position the elements within it horizontally with space between them. So the three elements that this applies to are first of all the logo. So that will still be visible in this view. And then you have this element, the unordered list with the main menu items and the unordered list for the social media items. So these are the three that are being pushed away from each other. 
in this wider screen view. Next for the social media icons. So I'm using Flexbox to align them within their own container using display flex and aligning them horizontally with a little bit of padding to the right for the social icons. So if you want the social icons to be pushed a little bit away from the right hand side of the nav menu, then you can increase this, for example, to one. I'll keep it at 0.5 REM here, but it might be something that you want to play around with. Then for the icons themselves that are inside link elements, I'm saying that the margin to the right of them should be one REM. So this is providing some spacing between the icons themselves and the size I've set to 1.3 REM. So I'm using REM a lot here, just in case you don't know. REM refers to the root font size for a HTML element on the user's particular device. So it's usually around 16 pixels, but it varies. So in this way, it's a responsive unit that will adjust based upon the user's screen size. Now for the menu items, I'm setting these to be positioned horizontally as well using Flexbox and the background color should be transparent because in the drop down, it's not the same color as the main nav menu, it's a darker color. So I'm setting that to transparent so you can see the purple underneath. Now what I'm doing here is I'm basically removing the padding that I included in the drop down view so that was necessary to give some spacing between the menu items, but now they are horizontally placed. I don't want any padding on the top. So I set that to zero. The font size you can of course play around with and the margin right, this is determining how much space there is going to be between the individual items. Okay, so hopefully everything is working now. So we have the wide view where it's not interactive. There's nothing to click on apart from the links themselves and the social media icons. And then when I adjust to a mobile view, then the menu items are accessible by clicking on the burger icon. Now to make the navbar even more responsive, something you might consider doing is creating another media query when the screen is very wide to make sure that content here isn't too small for the screen. So for example, I created one earlier which I will paste in here. So what I'm saying is if the screen size is 100 pixels or greater wide, then the menu items, they should be larger in font size and a greater margin to the right. So there's more space between them. Similar for the social media icons, making the margin a little bit bigger and bigger font size. And finally, I've made the logo a bit bigger than it would otherwise be. And you can add even more media queries if you like. At the moment, we basically have three views now. So now we're at the widest view. If I go down to a slightly smaller view, you'll see at a certain point, the items inside the nav bar, they become a bit smaller to adapt to the smaller screen size. And then of course, we also have the mobile view as well. So this is how you can create a responsive drop down navigation menu using just HTML, CSS and vanilla JavaScript. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find the video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget that you can subscribe to the channel.